Hi, welcome back. Right now we are having um next talk out is the big data journey in Hong Kong Zero One. Hong Kong Zero One is you know, when you go on the media, social media and stuff, you would see news from the Hong Kong Zero One. And here we have our Dr. Mo Wong and he is the He's the director of the data management in Hong Kong Zero One, and he leads all the project on data resource project and producing data science, as well as architecturing the data pipeline in Hong Kong Zero One. So here we come, Mr. Mo Wong, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, so uh, this talk I will contain in English. Uh, so so uh, pardon me if my English is not good enough. All right. Uh, today, uh, I've got a topic, I've got a mission. Uh, the first mission is uh, my boss tell me that, hey, come here and speak for Hong Kong Zero One. So mission number one. Okay, as mission number two is that, uh, well, I, I want to make this uh, content interesting. So I will share most of the contents or secrets inside HK Zero One. So uh, if I say that, don't take photos, then don't take photos, <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, one more thing is that, uh, well, uh, you know, in the Python society, many people will say that, hey, uh, are you going to talk about uh, data science or algorithm or something? I would say this talk is 70% uh, data engineering, 30% uh, data science. So uh, if you are engineers, welcome here. You will find that it's quite interesting. If, it is, uh, if you are a um, um, data scientist, uh, you will find that, hey, actually the data set that you are playing with is not that easy to get. And here I will share all the blood and sweats that are hidden uh, before you get a data set, okay? So, uh, wow, well, I'm a, basically as a local guy, I, uh, all, all my um, previous job as well as career happened in Hong Kong. Uh, I start my university study in 1997, uh, just like uh, uh, Sammy and uh, Hagen just told us that, hey, they start every uh, community thing starting with 1997, it's a good year, okay? Then I spent uh, 19 years in CHK teaching, and then, uh, wow, I feel that, uh, it's, it's something bad happening inside my mind that I feel that um, those stuff in university is not that exciting anymore, so I quit. Quit and then I joined the uh, uh, industry in order to get the uh, most uh, exciting stuff there. So I joined a startup and then I go to research area uh, to start some exciting project with uh, S3 as well as the security lab. And now I'm in HK01 for more than one year. Uh, during that year, uh, I spent a lot of time in doing uh, many data uh, architecture Basically, it's a research on uh, what are the things that we can squeeze, we can uh, take out from AWS uh, infrastructure, and we use a lot of AWS. So later on, you will see many dragons, many terms. If you don't understand what is that, raise up your hand. I will entertain all your requests. And also, we uh, turn my uh, our research. Uh, products into a uh, real product in our app. So uh, uh, today I, I, I want to demonstrate it for the, for the uh, screen capture, but it's f just failed. So, uh, so if you are really interested in, uh, please install our app and try it out. Uh, all I hear is like, uh, uh, I will spend a few minutes talking about uh, HK01, and the rest of the time I would talk about the data infrastructure. We start from ingress. The ingress means that we design all the data that we want. So basically, the HK01 data team is a very um, privileged team. Uh, we design all the data that we need. Ah, it's interesting, huh? Uh, maybe you are a data scientist in some areas, but you seldom have the control over the data you want. And in HK01, our data scientists is the, are the kings. They say that, hey, Mo, I want this, okay? I'm a humble servant, I will give you that. I will give you this, I will give you that. Um, that's my job, okay? And analytics, basically, uh, they do a e EDA every day, and of course, we have machine learning projects. Uh, so HK01, HK01 is, uh, wow, you may heard of uh, HK01 is a media company. The media company, you see a lot of posts uh, in Facebook. Uh, if you are not in a Hong Kong community, you will find it. It's very uh, seldom to see them because they are all written in Chinese. Uh, so if you're foreigners, you know English only. Sorry about that. We don't have any English article. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have uh, undergoing a 
weeks uh, of discussion in how to uh, make everything perform nice. Perform nice means that uh, we want to have our, let's say, uh, I will translate it, right? Okay, so we have our, this is, this sucks, okay. I will cry. Where's my pointer? The pointer, oh, it's, it's moved now, okay. It's, there is time delay, okay. So my, my cursor is still working. Okay, oh, here we are. So we have our uh, own platform. Uh, this is the wallet. Wallet, we are, no, this is secret now, okay. Uh, we bundle the wallet with Stripe, okay. So every payment, every sequence, we, we don't keep it, okay. We keep it in Stripe side. And we platform it uh, so that uh, this wallet things can be enabled. I uh, hope that you can see, uh, this laser is, wow, too weak, okay. Uh, there is uh, some icons there, they are services that we provide. Basically, you can use the wallet in those services. The left top corner, uh, the thing is, uh, you, you can consider it's a mobile order for the mass. Mobile order here, you, we are taking up our Starbucks uh, coffee. Starbucks has a mobile order. Now we construct some new services for the mass so that uh, you can order a uh, mobile order for Lai Cha, milk tea, so and so forth. Uh, while we have uh, this side, this side is uh, our product. Uh, if you have installed our app, you can see the first screen that you see is this recommendation feed. This recommendation feed is our uh, well, you know, uh, collaborative filtering stuff here. Uh, I train my profile, I mean this profile, I train this profile to be uh, animal fans, pets fans, so that you can see my first slot is, uh, is something about dogs, okay? But on your side, maybe you just install it, there are some news, ordinary news, uh, top news, because we didn't have your profile yet. Okay, so while you keep using it, we are building up a better profile for you, then we, we will give you this customized view, okay? So maybe, maybe a bit different. Uh, maybe you are love food, then the first stop will become food. Later on, I will talk, about, talk more about this. So the performanization here, yeah, there's uh, some delay. All right, uh, for the infrastructure side, we build everything from open source. Uh, basically, we use uh, our uh, Python, JS, uh, even PHP. Uh, PHP, some people consider, eh, I don't want it, it's too old. Okay, sorry, we still have it. Okay, uh, wow, well, legacy problem. All right, so here comes uh, the setup of our data team. Okay, uh, this golden circle, I hope that um, you know what it is. This golden circle is uh, the why, the how, and the what. Okay, the how is our core value. Why we set up this data team? So basically, this data team setup is for one uh, goal. The goal is we want to understand our users. Basically, do you hate our news? Do you love our news? Actually, we, we cannot guess it, right? We me measure it. We measure it by looking at, oh, how much time you spend on our app every day, how many articles you read, are there super fans? We, we see some super fans. I, I bet they are callers, okay? 100 articles per day. Do you believe it? 100 articles is too much, right? Maybe, a, maybe it's a quarter, okay? Uh, then based on this, we can provide uh, some actionable uh, insights to our business guy, to our marketing guy, to our digital operation guys. And by doing so, is we go to the how circle. The how circle is, uh, in our team, we provide a data-driven um, Guidance, I would say. The guidance means that, hey, if you have a new products, new features that's come out, you must go through our data team. Because we will tell you that, hey, what are the data you should collect? Or you should tell us how to collect, okay? So we call it the data-driven um, uh, direction or the product design. And our data team is the, is the least important thing, it's the what, okay? The what can be a Google Analytics script. The words can be something that uh, in a in a back end, but in our data team, uh, we just we just don't uh, get things up there from the law using ELK. Uh, we also implement a lot of uh, front end behavioral tracking. Later on, I will tell you what are those stuff that we are we are want basically, and we have a big team. 
Okay, so this uh, th those are the face you will see is ah uh, see the two face here. Okay, as two of them has uh, here is uh, is our data scientist here. No, no, he 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 should go to another talk. Okay, yeah. All right, so uh, we have uh, several uh, data scientists. We have basically three and four fourth is coming and two analysts, one PM, and the rest of them are engineers. I'm nothing. Okay, so. So our history, so the history is uh, we go through two uh, important phases. The first phase I call it uh, version 1.x or 1.0 or you can say this uh, is, a, is a garbage phase, okay? So it's the beginning. The beginning is uh, I, will, I will consider this as very typical. I will say very typical. You may see this diagram in many uh, AWS best practice guidelines or uh, some others, uh, colleagues in other companies will also have this infrastructure. Uh, basically, they have their own tracker. Maybe you're using Panel. You may use uh, uh, Google Analytics. It's up to you. Uh, we have our own tracker API, OK? And then you will heard of some names like uh, Yale. Uh, no, sorry, ETL. I, was, I want to say Yale, OK? okay. ETL. So the ETL, what is that? Uh, is that you tr extract data from the raw data, transform it, and make it into something that you can directly go to reports or dashboard, all right? So uh, I will suggest that um, if you're lazy, if you don't want to do many codings, okay, you can try out this so-called uh, kinesis analytics. Uh, it's just like a setting up a real-time SQL filter over your raw ingress stream. Okay, so you have an ingress, ingress stream, just like here, the ingress stream here, we have an API gateway going through the Lambda, the Lambda execute some Python codes in order to do the cleansing, the filtering, and then you go to this, uh, this is a little bit delayed here, the mouse is moving actually, here. This is the filter. Uh, basically, uh, we implement some analytics uh, queries here so that we can have real-time EA. ETL, uh, S3, what is the S3? The S3 is a simple object storage. Uh, this simple storage is for our ground truth. And you may think that, oh, this ground truth, why, why you will keep it? Because uh, so from time to time, we may need to backfill data. Uh, we create some data set, some data scientists will say that, oh, we, we should add this column. And, and in another day, they say that, oh, actually, I don't need it, okay? And then we have to change stuff uh, back and forth or incrementally improving the data set. So uh, the data set is uh, stored in the Redshift, all right? So this is a very um, typical things, but uh, there is a bracket here. I would say that this uh, redshift is chest beam. The chest beam means that no one, well, in the beginning, I would say no one monitoring it. No one care what are the stuff inside there, all right? So you will keep accumulating stuff, and there will be some bad things happen. I will show you later. And this redshift is basically the serving uh, three major Product lines, I would say. The data product, I just mentioned to you that if you have our apps, uh, you're spending, let's say, the uh, reading 30 articles already, then you will have a profile set up in our, on our site, and then we will create customized feed for you. Uh, the reporting, as well as the EDA. EDA, sometimes we don't need the air, airflow. This That icon is airflow. Uh, but I cannot point it out there. The iPhone is, oops, what happened? All right. The, the airflow there, the airflow is uh, uh, the scheduler later on. I will tell you more over uh, scheduler stuff. And some problems arise uh, when I hire more and more people. How many of you know what is that? Anybody knows? Uh, in our team, we sometimes call it the rainbow rangers or the rainbow attack. So what is that? There's so many colors there. Each color is a QA. Mm. And this is the dashboard of our AWS uh, Redshift cluster. And when we get more and more people on board, everybody want to, hey, I want to do this query, I want to do that query. Basically, we don't schedule it. You should be able to go to the console and do the query, and we got this, okay? And this eventually will happen if you follow our V1.0 design. Okay, so this happened 
And one other one other consequence, the consequence is here. Okay? Uh, you you can use a Postgres S Postgres SQL um, client to go to Redshift and the Redshift will give you this green output, this error. This error is too many connections. You are accumulating too many connections and we consider this a rainbow attack, I would call it. Okay? Uh, wow, how can you solve this? Uh, don't tell me we put it, okay? We put cannot solve anything, okay? Uh, well, you have to terminate those queries and uh, I, I tell you the secret. The secret is for one month, every, I don't know why, every Saturday, I got an incident. The incident is due to this, okay? And some, some of the, our app users tell us that, hey, it was the, the recommendation feed don't refresh. Don't refresh means that every time they see the same screen, okay? Because our Airflow job cannot QE our database, okay? And every Saturday it happens like this. I don't know why, for one month, okay? I, I, I got a dilemma there, should I do this or do that? And then we use a new implementation. The implementation is not sexy, okay? It's not sexy. Basically, what is that? <laughs> we sp spend more money, okay? We create more clusters. Uh, let's say uh, we have a production cluster with uh, all the data ingress, okay? There's the solid blue one. And there's two shadow blue ones. One is uh, for ad hoc queries, we call it a developer cluster. And the last one is a reporting cluster. Can this solve the problem? I would say actually not, uh, because we are actually creating more problems. The problem is you have to migrate the data, and then you will ask, hey, what, what is the cycle of the migration? Is the migration complete? Are those data synchronized? Are those data uh, in place uh, without any problem? That's a question. Okay, and also for the scalability problem, as our team keeps scaling, should I scale this diagram again? Uh, this, this is another dilemma, okay? Of course, money. Money is a big problem. Uh, one one Russia cluster is not that cheap, okay? We are spending th approximately, approximately 1,000, 1,000 USD per month for, for those clusters. It's not cheap, okay? So, um, well, it means that we have to do some recite, we design for scalability. And we design stuff, we love it very much. We really love it very much. What is the meaning we love it very much? It means that whenever I have a new hire comes in, whenever I get a new projects, new ETL jobs, basically we, our engineers stand there and say that, yeah, you use it. Basically, we scale it automatically. So what is the meaning of scaling automatically? Uh, first thing is, oh yeah, sorry, I, I forgot this, this cannot work, okay? So I'm drawing a circle here, okay? So this area, this area is one important area. Uh, we transform every data that we store into Parquet. How many of you know Parquet? No one knows, only one? Oh my God, okay. So Parquet is our key enabler, key enabler. Uh, the project that spawned Parquet is, uh, I don't say they spawned, but pair up with Parquet is called Apache Arrow. So Apache Arrow is to keep every data in a columnar style in memory. Parquet is a file format in which we call columnar file format. So this columnar file format works perfectly with pandas. Ah, and you heard some keywords now. So. This transformation happens like this. When a file is just created on our S3, okay, that's already a parquet format. AWS provides us a very good service. The service is called automatic parquet transformation with a service for file hosts. Okay, so that means that whenever we create a files with all our data, they are already in parquet format. But we are not satisfied with this because it's automatically driving every data from our tracking entities like our web, our app, concatenating, appending all the data into one file. We want to append more columns. So what are we doing next? Is whenever we create a parquet file, immediately we ask S3, hey, when you create this, give me a signal that you create this file, and then I call a Python script, okay? 
The Python script is living in Lambda, AWS Lambda, or in the uh, G GCP world, it's a cloud function. And this function is, uh, this time you can see this little, little cursor here. Uh, we use a Apache arrow, implemented as in Python, okay, and We're doing this, this, there's a delay, okay? So here, first uh, we can read every stuff from a parquet format and convert it into pandas. So you can see it's line 91, there's two pandas. And when you create it as a pandas file, you can now treat it as a data database. Now what is the meaning? Meaning is we suck up data from S3 directly into pandas and we can append columns now. Let's say I append a new column called server HKT, okay? Or you can add another columns, maybe it is the source of the data or whatever. Then we can flush it back to our uh, S3 as, as another, pen, as, as another uh, pandas format to convert into parquet. All right, so this, what is the enabler here? The enabler is we actually set up a real-time, nearly real-time, I would say, nearly real-time data transformation pipeline. Look at this. So this uh, uh, SQL QA, I hide something, okay, because they are, those are secrets, okay? Those are secrets, what are the table names, what are the field, what are the things that we are collecting? But anyway, uh, you can see what, what, is, what is this QA? The QA is to extract the new columns that I append called server HKT, all right? And uh, there is article ID uh, of every article in HAC01. Uh, number, not nine, number seven, number eight, okay? If you know QE, you know that what I'm doing is actually sorting descend, uh, in, in, sorry, sorting in a de descending order of the time. And you can compare to two time. That is the Hong Kong official time. This is our database time, okay? so. We may think that, hey, what is the importance here? Uh, every, every time we have a, we have a database uh, insertion is already real time, okay? But in HK01, our scale is different. Our scale is daily number of events is 30 millions, 30 millions events per day, okay? So you will expect that uh, around for number of users, it's not event anymore, number of users every minute is thousands, thousands of users is using our app and web, and this ingress, if you want to have real time, is a big headache for you, okay? But we're using AWS now. We set it up, and the enabler is the parquet format. And what is this interface? How many of you knows? Do you know what is the interface? This interface is called the AWS Athena, okay? AWS allow us to treat S3, the, data, the, the file system there, as a big QE engine, so you did directly QE stuff in S3. Now you see the power, the power is I keep creating files and the files already go into your database QE, QE interface in a real time format, all right? All right, so uh, time running short, huh? uh, I will speed up. All right, so this part already enable us to have a real time streaming of every data that you want. Now, how about our, our data scientist? Our data scientist is not going to query over raw data, okay? They expect something structure, something that they already know, or you call it data set, okay? So the data set uh, creation is we do it uh, using Spark. Spark also knows how to read parquet format, okay? So you can, suck up everything from a raw format using, a Py, we use PySpark. Py you use a Spark SQL, uh, Spark SQL, set it up, and then use uh, ML library. Or you don't want Spark, you can create another pipeline like this. All right, speed up a bit. The pipeline like this, still taking up data already firing to S3 in a real-time format, but this time you create dockerized environment. The dockerized environment, then you can plug in Q 
Keras, plug in um, Scikit-learn, plug in uh, Jupyter notebook there. Uh, we use uh, AWS Batch. This batch is actually uh, running containers. You package your containers, okay? Your, um, let's say, you do Keras, you do machine learning algorithm, and read it up from S3. Then you write back your results back to S3, okay? Or directly go to, let's say, the dashboard. It's up to you. Okay, so here you can see this. We create this dual pipeline. This one pipeline is for Spark. It's up to you whether you, you want Spark or you, you want something uh, traditional. All right, but it's up to you. Now, we have everything ready, and you can imagine that whenever we got hire, a new hire, let's say this guy, don't know, don't know Kiras, don't know Scikit-learn, he's only know Spark, no problem. Okay, we create this pipeline for you. And then you just give us the code. Our data engineer will help you to deploy it, or we even teach you how to deploy it. And this um, pipeline has a very, very um, big merit is we run it in independent manner. Okay, so we have a scheduler called Airflow. Uh, let's say you create a pipeline calling AWS. AWS batch, okay, this AWS batch is to run, let's say, the collaborative filtering algorithm every five minutes, okay, so you set it up in Airflow, then this pipeline, the lower pipeline, the orange one, will get um, executed every five minutes, okay. Uh, of course, there are some coins, but the coins, whether it's, it's your coins, it's up to you, because we have very heavy um, DevOps jobs there. You see, we set up everything there in order to enable our data scientists to do their job independently, okay? So in our team, our data, data scientists, for new hires, I would say, they don't know our infrastructure. Basically, they, they just use, but they can use our latest data or some data just got, uh, let's say we just uh, spun up a new feature. The new feature will immediately get into our S3 real-time stream and appear in your data scientist toolkit, all right? So maybe this is uh, uh, some boring stuff for data scientists. Now we jump to data scientist side, okay? The data scientists, uh, you want to schedule your job, you use Airflow, okay? So we set up different jobs here, and uh, I, I will skip this, okay? I won't say too much about this. You can see this, uh, this is the job that we created so many, uh, we call it a direct a sidekick graph or a DAG there. So for data scientists, uh, maybe you want to know what are the stuff that we have done in HKC01. Uh, I will talk about you very fast. Uh, first is article topic modeling, okay? So uh, this is uh, NLP stuff. Another stuff is uh, the reading habit, doing uh, collaborative filtering, all right? Uh, our goal, of course, our why is to understand our user behavior. So uh, there's two machine learning products uh, to enrich our user uh, experience eventually. All right, so our topic modeling objectives. I won't say too much things, okay? My background is engineering background. I'm not scientist background, although I, I lead their research. Okay, the objective is to find the clusters of published article, okay? And we want to understand which are the clusters that uh, a specific user loves. So that whenever we get a new article published, I want to push the article to that guy. All right? So understand this uh, problem statement. All right, the problem statements here may use some of your concerns. Uh, maybe you are working in a, a media company, then you will see that uh, some articles have some so-called tags. Okay, the tags are by uh, the journalists or the writers themselves, all right? Uh, those are the concerns, okay? The concerns like, uh, is the tag having a good quality? Is it too common? Too common, let's say the tag is called dogs. Thank you. What are the dogs? The dogs eating another dogs or eating a food? I don't know, all right? The dog, oh no, sorry, dog, tag, okay? <laughs> the tag is too specific or an article without tags. It usually happen when they're in a rush, okay? Forget to do the tags, or they put in too many tags because they, they think that our machine learning algorithms obey their tags, sorry. Uh, we don't have the analysts here, huh? We don't obey any tags, all right? We just 
learn from uh, NLP results. All right. Uh, I don't say too much stuff. Uh, I will just tell you what are the uh, little things that we have done there. We do the tokenization. Uh, tokenization is quite easy in the context of English, but in the context of Chinese, we use a uh, Jiebu library in Python and convert it into TF5DF vector. And do, doing this is a typical standard stuff. Now the not obvious stuff is this is an unsupervised learning problem. How can we solve it? Because the output is probabilistic. Every time we run the model, it gives us different results. We want it to con converge as much as possible in terms of every executions. All right. So there's those those little secrets that I'm hiding. Okay. But anyways, if you want to know about the algorithms, okay, I suggest two. We use LDA first. And then we switch to autoencoder in in Keras. All right. If you want to know the story behind it, uh, welcome to talk talk about it offline. Okay. One more, I will do it uh, within one minute. Uh, recommendation fit is very clear to you guys. Uh, if you take uh, Andrew uh you will know that the collaborative filtering is to do a matrix manipulations. Okay, and here our objective function is to minimize the time that a user finds an article he loves. All right, clear enough. And after we do all the stuff, because I'm running out of time, I have to skip this. Uh, the little details here. We are using a library called Implicit. The Implicit is running an algorithm called Alternating Least Square or ALS. The ALS is to optimize for implicit feedback data set. Okay, if you understand why I'm, I'm talking about good for you, All right? And I will skip uh, the performance chart. Okay, the performance charts I grab it from an implicit uh, uh, repo. All right, our collaborative learning result is we compare this using A/B tests. Uh, the A version is to order by time, all the articles. Uh, the B version is order based on our predicted preference for users. Okay, and we just mentioned that our objective function is to minimize the time that they find the articles that they love. So the first slot probability of clicking becomes very important. Right, the first slot is a slot that just you just see my screenshot. There's a dog there. If you find that the first slots appear to be your article, we predict that ah you should click it. And thank you, we're actually doing very good stuff. From five percent upgraded, I mean take through rate from five percent upgraded to ten percent. Okay, you're doubling the CTR, the click through rate, and. One more side event is our overall page will grows by three percent. All right. Uh, some discussion we can keep it offline. Let's say content strategy: how to promote target articles. Yeah, we have a very super important articles. How can I promote it? Content discovery: if you know collaborative filtering, there's a problem that if you have, have brand new stuff, actually you cannot promote it because no one will it, right? No one will it, so that you cannot. Collaborating with another guys, and that guys, ah, oh, this guy will it. Okay, that actually that guy love my love this article. I should love this as well. But this information lost. Okay, so I can discover it. And also content aging. Uh, we are doing distrib uh, distributing articles, right? We don't want to distribute old articles again and again. All right. So how can I age those uh, recommendation? Or I say the old articles. All right. So some takeaways. Uh. Uh, the parquet on S3 actually is a key enabler from the data engineering perspective. Okay, we have seven, uh, not seven, I would say several. Okay, we actually uh, set up several pipelines. Uh, basically, the pipeline is uh, we know our problem very well. We have some IO intensive jobs, many joins happens on the ETL side. So we choose to use Spark with EML and memory intensive job, we put it into Docker with a, uh, well, very very expensive uh, AWS instance. Okay, so one more slice. Okay, we're hiring. <laughs> okay, welcome to scan the QR code. That's going to happen here. Yeah, this is going to a, a site that uh, you you just seen it. All right. Oh, time is running short. I'm sorry for um, 
delayed the next talk. Okay, so if you have any questions, I can entertain one questions here. Yes, um, very impressive presentation. Uh, so Thank you. When you evaluate the um, the cloud approach. How do you uh, weight in the vendor locked in versus uh, you get you you get the, the best in the cloud? Very good questions. Basically, we're we're not evaluating, but we already want to tackle it. Uh, no, AWS sales representative here. Huh? We are actually uh, trying to use G GCP already, and as well as a uh, one more problem: how can we own our own infrastructure? So, uh, if you have seen my face before uh, in open source conference, we talk about Kafka. Uh, we have our own Kafka setup. Uh, basically, the evaluation is, of course, course, as well as our uh, human efforts. How many DevOps guys we need to set up all the things? Like Kafka is actually not a very uh, attractive choice because you set it up, you spend one main month in order to evaluate all things. Whether you, it, it, it's just a uh, multi AZ, multi, um, I would say data data center de uh, deployment. So we evaluate in terms of people, in terms of uh, reliability, as well as course. Okay, so uh, I I will be outside uh, for the entire day. So if you have any further questions, welcome to ask me. Thank you.